Scott has been dabbling in media other than games. What's wrong with you? Let's go. Almost started a fight there. Yeah, come at me, bro. As I look over here and see my video game music and video <laughs> game book uh, that I'm getting rid of. What do you What do you want? What do you need to know? I. What do you mean? What do I need to know? <laughs> you said, "What's that about?" Do I need to defend myself? Yeah. I've been reading Console Wars. Actually, I read it. I was so amazed when it came in the mail because I ordered like five books as a Christmas present to myself for Christmas. Go figure. Not a Christmas present to yourself for <laughs> Easter's. <laughs> and. It was huge. It was like 500 pages. That's like, a big what? book. So I didn't expect that. I also didn't expect it to be like historical fiction. I thought it was just going to be a historic recounting. So, so you're telling me that this is like they're like a it's like a story. Yeah, they made like a main character and a start and a middle and an end and everything. Kind of. We'll get to that. So with that came a couple of things. It had language that the characters used that I didn't expect because it was apparently fiction, right? And then it also, so they talked like that, but they also talked with this weird grandeur. Is that how you pronounce that word? I, I say grandeur. 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 That's how yes. I say it, though. So everyone was like, we shall make Sonic the Hedgehog. <laughs> And uh, not quite like how art thou, but <laughs> but almost. I'm like not everybody is gonna talk like that. Maybe one or two weird people. For those so of you, that kind of threw me off. For those of you who aren't alive in the '90s, we didn't talk like that. If you you know see pictures of Vanilla Ice, that's what we looked like. Can you imagine <laughs> Vanilla Ice saying, "We shall rap." <laughs> And the last main thing that I did not expect was Go the Sega news. slant, which Ooh. that is going to be reflected in the B-roll here. Oh, it's yeah, going to be Mike all Jackson. Sega, because I thought this was going to be like Sega versus Nintendo, pretty much half and half. But no, uh, Kalinske is the Sega of America CEO, and he's the main character, so it pretty much primarily follows him. Uh, Sega is always mentioned first, Sega, Nintendo this, Sega, Nintendo that. Hmm. On the cover, the Sega controller is on top, and the Nintendo controller is on the bottom, and the Nintendo controller is wrong, even. It was supposed to be about the 16-bit wars, and it shows the NES controller. <laughs> okay, and you turn the book over, the author in his picture is holding a Sega controller. So hmm. clearly, a Sega fan wrote this book, which is fine. I don't mind learning things from the other side, especially because I learned that Nintendo is pretty shady. Hmm. Especially back in the day. Now, so yeah. so you're telling me here that this person might be trying to um, unearth revisionist history happening. Do you know? Do you know what revisionist yeah. history mm -hmm. is? Yeah. I think so. Because hmm. as they say, the winners write history, right. so if Nintendo writes history, they might portray themselves nicer. Well, the facts are that we already made a video about the president of Nintendo at the time, Mr. Yamauchi, yep. and he he was a tyrant. We kind, mm -hmm. of, we kind of covered that in our own research, but what that looked like in this book is mainly a lot of not fulfilling orders, which is weird. You'd think if you're getting a lot of orders, you want to fulfill all of them. But they created this false scarcity, and they also like bullied retailers. Like Wait. if you order 200 NESs or SNESs from us, we're gonna send you 10. So <laughs> that's that's so messed up. Yeah, that's, yeah. That's you, I, when you said uh, a false false scarcity. I'm like, is that what they did with Amiibos? Probably. Maybe. <laughs> I mean, or they just did a forced scarcity right yeah. yeah and then another thing would be like walmart if you carry sega genesis we are not going to send you our products <sighs> that's harsh so stuff like that uh other things i learned the sega of america ceo worked for other toy companies before he got asked to come work for sega and he worked at, with like mattel and barbie and stuff and he really helped those products take off so he was instrumental in mm. Sega's initial success. Uh, Sony not only also almost partnered with Nintendo for the Nintendo PlayStation, but they almost cut a deal with Sega as well. 
And then they're like, wait, everybody wants in on this. Maybe we can crush them. And that's pretty much what happened. <laughs> um, pretty much. <laughs> also, Sega played a big role in starting the ratings board. The government said, you have to start regulating this yourself or we're going to force it to be regulated. So they're like, okay, we'll form basically what became the ESRB and we will take the onus for informing parents uh, on video game content. So oh. there you go. Uh, before I get into what I would have liked about the book, what have I not mentioned? About yes. What is the book? You now you mentioned it being about the sixteen bit wars, but you also talked about Sony. So what like time frame does it span? Mm -hmm. Like how early does it go and how late does it go? I was kind of disappointed by that. It was very much from like the launch of the Sega Genesis to them going out of business with barely any background information on either end hmm. so i would have liked to learn about the master system which is hard to learn about and i don't have much experience with and then also more reasons going into why they went out of business it was like the page is the pages remaining kept getting thinner and thinner and i'm like they're not in trouble yet what's what's going to happen and basically there was a you, flip it over and then they're like we're dead uh, yeah tom kalinsky <laughs> is back on the beach <laughs> and i'm like what happened with the saturn and the dreamcast and stuff so it was kind of strange hmm yeah um now did it talk it sounds like it talked more about industry things did it inform you about like particular games that you weren't familiar with or was it more um, or was it all about the industry as a whole? Yeah, they definitely talked about some specific games, the big key players. Like, I learned a lot about Sonic the Hedgehog and how what he was originally going to be and how Sega of America and Japan argued a lot over the design and if he would have a human girlfriend or not and if she would be goth, <laughs> that kind of thing. <laughs> Are you serious? Yeah. So they basically... Whatever didn't win, they went back and fixed with Sonic 06. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And then I also learned that Sonic 2 was a big deal because they did Sonic Tuesday, which is like the first set release day that wasn't a, a that didn't have precedence in the gaming industry hmm. before. So it was like actually something that gamers could mark on the calendar and look forward to, whereas most of the time it's just like whenever it gets loaded off the truck into your store genius and also mortal kombat was pretty big in like showing the differences between nintendo and how they censored it and sega and how they were proud of the blood and stuff but also how that made some employees feel conflicted with like we're promoting this kind of thing and then hmm. how that was instrumental in making the ratings board too i see yeah um, did this make you want to go back and play old Sega stuff? No. It didn't? <laughs> no. <laughs> Not at all? I mean, I have Sonic Mania on my Switch that I still need to beat, but I've gone back to Sega time and time again, and it's fine. But I, the more I go back to Sega games, the more I learn that like maybe they weren't ever that great. They were cool. They were. Like Vanilla Ice they did a was good, cool. <laughs> they did a good job promoting themselves and on the marketing and all that, but yeah. I see. Yes. And I was going to tell you one more thing. Comment away. And that is, it was kind of cool that it seems to be historically accurate. Like, there's a lot of dialogue and stuff that I have no clue if it ever happened, but the author did get to speak with a lot of people and interview them, and and bring that into the book. Mostly Sega employees, but like they do kind of have their stamp of approval and their input on how things were. So hmm. it's fairly reliable, and I appreciate that. And also there's some pictures in the middle of the actual people at events like CES, and you get to see what 90s clothes look like. <laughs> yeah. Scary times. Yeah. Scary times indeed. So would you recommend this book, finally? Or would you recommend this video if you want everything that's in the book? I would recommend this video. <laughs> well, there you go. There you have it. No need to read the book. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Thanks for being a part of the crew. And, Don't you're, and you're welcome for watching. <laughs> Don't forget to share this video with your friends so that they can become part of the crew. See you guys next time. Signing out.